So for our next video, we're going to be talking about esters. Now, esters are very, very similar to what we did previously, which was carboxylic acids. So with this one's going to be a carboxylic acid, what makes an ester different is you've got your carbon chain, C, double bond O, and that attaches, instead, to a, instead of an OH, it's going to attach to an O, and then it's going to attach to some other carbon chain. So what we do is we call this whole piece here an ester group. Okay, so we have our carboxyl from before, and this is what we're referring to now as our ester. So when we're making esters, and we'll talk more about production over the coming weeks, but when we're talking about that, what it is, is it's a matter of where we've taken an alcohol and a carboxylic acid, which we can see here on the left, and what we do is it's called dehydration. And this would take place in under the influence of acid. And we can see, as this is our catalyst, we would produce an ester and the product of H2O. So when we're naming them, we're going to identify the root. This is a little bit different than what we've done previously. Before, what it was was the longest carbon chain. That's no longer going to be true. So you've got R, C, double bond, O, C, or O, and then R. So a second chain. Whatever's over here is going to be considered the side chain, and whatever over here is going to be considered the main chain. So the end of this is going to be an O8. So once we figure out what the main chain is in the side chain, it follows all the other rules we've done previously. So we'll scroll down a little bit, and let's say, for example, we have a chain. So, we look at this piece right here. This is the piece that's not connected to the double bond O. Therefore, this is going to be considered the side chain. So, therefore, this is going to be considered a methyl. Over here, this is considered our main chain. It's considered the main chain, not because it's the longest, but because it's got this O right here. So, therefore, this is going to be a propan. Now, because this is our main chain, it's going to be called an O8. So therefore, the final name of this product here is going to be methyl propanoate. Now, one more example I want to show you is if we've got CH3. Okay, so what's our side chain going to be? Our side chain is going to be this piece right here. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, but that's the longest carbon chain. Doesn't matter. By definition, our main chain is going to be the piece that's attached to this double bonded oxygen. So this is going to be ethanoate. Now the side chain is going to go over here. The side chain is going to come first, and this is a propyl group. So propyl ethanoate. Now, if you're wondering if this is one word or two, it's considered two words. Word one, space, word two. So here we got the one example of the methyl ethanoate. So we look at this example we've got right here. We've got a propyl side chain, propyl ethanoate. If we look at the next example right here, We've got ethyl group right, we have an ethyl group right here, the propo propanoate right here, so this becomes ethyl propanoate. So the fact that this piece here has a, we're describing uh, an ester, we have our side chain right here. This is where it becomes important that, to note that this is two words, it's not one with hyphens. There's going to be a space here. We have our first piece here which is going to be two carbons, so we know it's going to be an ethyl. Now we've got a space. Now we can look at our main chain. We have one, two, three, four. So we know it's going to be butanoate, but off of spot three, we've got a methyl group. So therefore, it's ethyl space three methyl butanoate. 
That's why this space here is important. We need to differentiate that we've got the ethyl group on the one side of the carb or the oxygen, and then the rest part on the main part of the carbon. So this is known as an ethyl 3-methyl butanoate. Okay, so in this next slide here, we've been asked to draw a butyl propanoate. So we're going to have to draw our carbon, double bonded to the oxygen, bonded to the oxygen. Now we've got carbon chains in two directions. So we've got, in this case, a butyl here. A butyl means four carbons. So CH2, 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 CH3. There's our butyl side chain. Propanoate's the main chain. So we've already got one carbon right here. So there's our second carbon, and then here's our third carbon. So butyl propanoate. Now esters tend to give flowery and fruity smells. This is the structure that we're smelling when we're having this. If we want to undergo dehydration or hydrolysis, where we add water, what you're going to see is that an ester can turn back into a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. Don't worry too much about mechanisms. We're going to deal with those entirely in a separate lesson.